We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back on Liberty Nation Radio here on the Radio American Network. Now, Tim, uh, we've we've come, we've really run the gamut on what's happening with Kamala Harris, with the Supreme Court reform refrain uh, promoted by Joe Biden. Uh, now, I want to delve a little bit more into the practicalities of the Kamala Harris campaign and specifically the surrogates that she's employing and the because it, it seems to me if i may go off on a slight tangent here kamala harris isn't actually campaigning she, she's allowing the fourth estate to campaign on her behalf all of a sudden she's a viable candidate when in 2020 she managed to accrue 844 votes out of the millions cast in the democrat primary um, and so she's that's one of your favorite uh, metrics. Mark. It's one of my favorite metrics. It's uh, you know in England we use the uh, we well we we did often use the imperial system and then we got taken over by the metrics. So we're coming back to the the imperial. And I know in America, not you, a moment too soon. Three cheeseburgers to the bald eagle uh, is your measurement system or something. This this piece of wood is fifteen <laughs> liberties past the freedom fries. Um, I know we have these these various metrics. But my favorite metric is 844 primary votes out of potentially millions. But let's talk about the campaign and how it's other people running it for her. Uh, and there's something that's really struck out to me, Tim. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a China file. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student of Chinese history, especially recent history. Um, I have a lot of connections to the country in terms of uh, my time spent there uh, and the, the people I know there. And... One thing seems to just keep cropping up in my mind, and it's the idea of struggle sessions that became very popular in the 1920s and 1930s, and obviously continued through the, the great cultural revolutions and the great leap forwards of the, the later days of Chinese communism. Uh, and these struggle sessions were where people would, uh, I'm sure you know what they are, where people would denigrate themselves, humiliate themselves in the self-criticism that was very a very Soviet theme at the time, uh, and it happened in Soviet Russia too. Uh, and they would do that because it would benefit the party. And now what we see is these cringeworthy, disgraceful displays of such things as, and I'm, I'm sure you've heard this, white dudes for Harris. And it's these hundreds of thousands of people on these joint Zoom calls where essentially they're saying, I'm a white person. I'm for Kamala Harris. And here's the privilege that I have. Here's the damage that I've done to a society. And yet I can self flagellation. Oh, it's self flagellation. That's, that's, you know, if you, t if you hearken back to that horrible summer of 2020, mm -hmm. The kind of people you're talking about were the ones who were brought into line and told to admit their privilege, to apologize for it, and to become not um, opposed to racism, but anti-racist. And the difference is these kind of people were told, you can't just say you're not racist. You've got to get out there and actively pursue social justice. Those are the kind of people, the white dude, so to speak, that are behind Kamala Harris. But, you know, it, it, um, it reminds me of something that we're also seeing uh, contemporaneously. This idea, first of all, Kamala Harris, she, if you look at her first three events as a presidential candidate, she went to Indianapolis to talk to a black female sorority. Presumably, those are people who are already probably planning to vote for her in a state. Mm -hmm. She has no chance to win. And then she goes to Wisconsin, yes. But after that, she goes to Massachusetts to raise money, a state she can't possibly lose. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me is, yes, you're right. It's a surrogate campaign. She can't carry the burden by herself. And to be fair, in 100 days, it's too much to ask her to do that. So she's going to have to rely on surrogates. She's going to have to pick, in my view, the 
the VP candidate who is the single best campaigner she can find because she's going to need it. Yes, um, she'll have to put almost all of the the crowd draw on people that she's appearing with rather than just her. I believe, uh, and I don't know how true this is, but uh, she had a a big performer turn up at a campaign event prior to her. And then the reports started coming in that about five minutes after the big performer had finished the show, people started leaving and that, that left left just the core of Kamala support. Now, I don't know how true that is. It could just be, uh, you My know. My guess, though, Mark, in, in fairness, Mark, I think the residual crowd for Kamala Harris was still probably exponentially larger than the biggest crowd that Joe Biden got in the entire campaign. Oh, yeah. Yes, very I much. I mean, there is, look, there's real enthusiasm for her here. This is the rollout. She's going to be on a roll here uh, until the convention. She got the hit for joining the campaign. She got the hit for raising, what is it, $200 million in pent-up contributions. Uh, she'll get another hit when she picks the VP. And my guess is it'll be Mark Kelly, the senator from Arizona, but there's other of good candidates. And then she'll get a fourth hit at the Democratic convention where she can read a speech off a teleprompter effectively and for her sake, hopefully mute the cackle. And she could come out of the convention in pretty good shape. But that's when the real campaign begins. That's when Donald Trump will begin to dismantle her piece by piece. And I suspect by the time we get to November, there will be a distinct minority of Americans who believe that Kamala Harris can handle the job of commander in chief with the world on fire and the country on fire. That's my prediction. We'll see how that prediction plays out. I suspect you might be right. Tim Donner, thanks ever so much for joining us. Pleasure, Mark. And that's all we have time for on this week's special edition of Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network from our flagship station in the nation's capital, WWRC in Washington, D.C. I've been your host, Mark Angelides. I'd like to take a moment to thank our guest today, longtime host of this here show and Liberty Nation's senior political analyst, Tim Donner. And of course, extend my gratitude to you, the listeners, for taking the time each week to tune in and join us here on the station. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.